Hello, Flex. Uh, for those that uh, that aren't quite familiar with you yet, can you uh, start with a quick background and kind of tell us where you are? Yeah, sure. Um, uh, thanks uh, for this uh, interview. And uh, actually, uh, my background is quite simple because uh, <laughs> um, I, 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 I got my education in, in China, mainland China, in Yunnan province, which is a quite uh, relaxing place. So I have not been under like huge pressure like other uh, uh, like uh, other Chinese students and uh, yeah quite because in, in Yunnan the, the national, ent national national university entrance examination is not very tough for us so um, I got quite okay. relaxed <laughs> high school and uh, but I was so in, into physics back to uh, high school and my dream was to go to go my, my, my dream was to uh, go to moon uh, simply because uh, there are lots of uh, helium on the moon and uh, uh, that's very important for humans' energy, so-called so energy free freedom. Mm. I apply uh, helium to, to generate fusion power and that was my dream back to uh, like a, a high school. Uh, but it, it, I was uh, lucky that I got very high sc school uh, to like, I can choose freely between uh, lots of university in Hong, in, in, in China, and uh, that was uh, back to twenty seven, uh, to two thousand seven. It was actually the first year that uh, Hong Kong's universities, um, they, they they accept Chinese students, uh, mainland, mainland China Chinese students, and mm -hmm. uh, um, coincidentally that I, I I did enroll to that program, so I was at, uh, admitted by a uh, city university of Hong Kong, uh, which is, which was unlucky for me. Um, when I was there in, at that age, but looking back, connecting the dots, I feel it's very lucky for me to to go to to go to Hong Kong for the uh, like uh, university education. And uh, in Hong Kong, I actually got education on finance, finance, uh, finance and account accountants and uh, common law. So I changed a lot of my views of the word to to the. Uh, I mean, my, my views on the word, and I changed lots of things. Uh, with, I, I would say that uh, my mindset has been totally changed um, when uh, when getting the education in Hong Kong. And uh, uh, I was uh, not very into finance uh, previously, but uh, back back to the university uh, life, I, I got the, um, I, I, I actually enrolled lots of uh, um, courses from the famous famous professors in finance uh, financial areas. So. Uh, I actually changed my mindset on the finance as well. I was thinking, I was thinking that finance is something uh, just scamming. It's, it's kind of scamming. It's fraud. It's whatever um, bad things. Especially during my university life, uh, back to 20, 2008, uh, it was the last financial crisis. Uh, so I, I think uh, finance, finance is something not good. But uh, actually, after I get the, the appropriate education, and I totally understand. Finance itself is something good. The, the problem is humans greedy, uh, or hum, humans greed, uh, this kind of thing. It's not. It's not finance tool. Financial tools fraud uh, fault, but it's a human's fault. Mm -hmm. um, so I got. I. I, I actually. Um, uh, I, I. I started my first entre entrepreneurship during my university. I kind of uh, joined a team with my 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 my. Uh, College mates, uh, and we won the HSBC uh, Global Entrepreneur Awards. And uh, oh wow, uh, yeah, we got in. That, that was my the, the first time that a city university or Hong Kong uh, students can get this kind of awards. Normally, these uh, these, uh, these awards goes to uh, these awards go go to like uh, students in uh, University of Hong Kong University was a uh, like Chinese University of Hong Kong because uh, City University of Hong Kong is actually. Uh, the second tier university in Hong Kong. It's not the best one. So, uh, but we we tried our best and we we got the we, we got the these things to to our like university. So, <laughs> we got breaking lots boundaries. Of... <laughs> you're, you're quite so, humble yeah. in the way you're framing all of this too. But uh, yeah, yeah. that's a that's a cool first entrepreneurial experience there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the first entrepreneurship is actually on biotechnology. We apply the biotechnology developed developed by the professors in the university. To actually to do the food test and to to do the hazard test because uh, back then it was uh, the crisis of the 
milk powder in China. So we, we got lots of attention, uh, got the investment from the uh, VCs and uh, uh, yeah, uh, quite quite cool experience. And, but I dropped it from this company uh, before the graduation and because uh, uh, during the uh, competition, actually I met the uh, chairman of PricewaterhouseCoopers in Asia and then he, he thinks I'm good because I was uh, like a student in, in accountancy and uh, he thinks that uh, Pricewaterhouse could, Coopers could provide me a good platform to, to enhance this kind of experience in accountancy and uh, mm -hmm. assurance and other things. So uh, I got my first job without interview into Pricewaterhouse, Pricewaterhouse Coopers Hong Kong. And uh, I, cause I, I think it's uh, kind, of, kind of interesting that, uh, uh, because I I, I I knew the chairman, so I got very good kind of I got <laughs> by the by the partners by the by the like senior managers. So I got very pro, uh, very good good job. I mean projects in in Price Not uh, not like, like others. They, they 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 have tough assurance jobs, but uh, my client is actually AIA, uh, which was <laughs> which was a company uh, went com bankruptcy during uh, two two thousand eight financial crisis. Mm -hmm. um, so I got very good experience, uh, exposure to like investment side or asset side of the uh, insurance company. Uh, during the period of the price out with Waterhouse Coopers, uh, I actually got very deep understanding of these financial products, and like, like CDO, CDS, uh, like a bond, like a worthy uh, macro things. Uh, so that was the period I trained into trying to be a good or professional financial and accounting guy. Um, but back, back then, I was uh, not so into blockchain then yet. Uh, that was the first time. Not many I, people were. <laughs> I, I heard that was the first time I heard of Bitcoin. I think, oh, okay, another scam, <laughs> or another, uh, another fraud, uh, this kind of thing. But, mm -hmm. uh, but this is kind of human bias and uh, uh, people need to learn to change their mindset. Like in Goldman Sachs yesterday, the, the, the publication on the Bitcoin is kind of nonsense for me. I mean, they don't understand it, so I don't care. Well, but, but it's good that the government says can draw attention to the public. So uh, there will be more people like me, I mean, um, back to 2011, not to, to read more things about Bitcoin. So the earlier you read more things about Bitcoin, you will be a lover or a fan of Bitcoin. So, for sure. Uh, that, that report almost reads like it's from 2011. Uh, yeah, yeah. How uh, kind of you know, yeah, so, it, it just misses. Uh, yeah, so it was a good experience. But uh, back then, I think I I'm uh, I think I, I got enough experience in Price Waterhouse Coopers, and I dropped from uh, uh, PwC, and I, I I went back to to Beijing for my second entrepreneurship. It's it was for um, like financial data services for the banks from a uh, credit company. To help them to do the credit profiling, uh, profiling for a smaller or small, a small medium medium sized entrepreneur in China. Um, uh, but so, so you 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 do your time, uh, kind of getting some uh, you know initial career experience at, at PwC. Uh, then you decide to make the move and and found the company in Beijing, essentially, which is kind of a big move. Uh, had yeah. you um, and it's in kind of the fintech space. I guess, yeah, take, take us uh, kind of through what you started to talk about with what that company did, who it kind of service. Uh, yeah, it's a kind of a financial data service provider. Uh, it just helps banks or uh, credit company to actually assess the credit profiling of the, uh, of the entrepreneur in China. Uh, back mm -hmm. then, I, would, I, I actually, I was thinking that uh, the pain points for the banks is that they don't have enough data to actually provide credit to these uh, uh, so-called uh, inclu inclusive uh, or, or un unbanked people. But the mm -hmm. problem there was not actually bank ha has no ability to do this. The problem is actually in China, the interest rate is actually not very, um, uh, it's not running in a market way. Namely, uh, a bank lent to a government uh, or state-owned company with the interest of 5%, and they, they can only lend to this entrepreneur uh, with 5% or 7%. So if you have the same, same, same interest rate for, for like different kind of risk profile, what, what you choose? 
of course you choose to lend to those people who will not go to uh, bankruptcy like a state-owned companies, right? So I, I went to into the wrong direction uh, in the first entrepreneurship, but uh, uh, because my, my ideology and other things, uh, this, this, uh, this, this, this project attracted some like a VCs like Gen Fund, a famous fund in China and uh, Lightspeed China's. Uh, uh, so uh, that was my first experience dealing with uh, mm. VCs, dealing with uh, all these kind of things. So I got quite, quite trained up on the so-called entrepreneurship, like yeah, attracting fun from VCs uh, um, and find out the right, right clients doing the right things during the right time. So that was my first time uh, of the, uh, that was my first time to, to kind of organize a, 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 a company as an organization because in the first intra- entrepreneurship, I was just For a sure. partner. Yeah, but the second one, I was founder and the CEO, so I got trained up. <laughs> Yeah, I've been mean, raising capital from, like you said, some of the bigger names in China. Uh, uh, Lightspeed, I guess, sort of around that time, uh, was starting to look at some some Bitcoin companies. Uh, um, I think one of the one of the backers of uh, BTC China close to back then. Uh, what, what was kind of the, the the ecosystem for startups in Beijing at that point? This is what year are we looking at? 2014, 15? 2015. Yeah. 2014, 2015 is actually uh, are actually very good year for China's uh, entrepreneurship. Uh, there are lots of funds there and uh, people are just uh, looking for this, uh, like VCs, uh, PEs, they are just looking for projects that uh, they just want to invest. They don't really care about your, your everything. They, they just want to invest. They just want to pull the money in. And, uh, it felt like then, easy money. Yeah, yeah. Like they, they got lots of money from different, different places because uh, in 2000, from 2008 to uh, 2015, uh, in China, actually uh, another uh, like a good, good uh, a few a few good years for China, uh, and the back um, because back to 2008 after the financial crisis, China printed like four trillion RMB. It was it it was big back mm-hmm. then. It is so small now. I mean, <laughs> right? What, Looking back, those numbers seem quite quaint. <laughs> yeah, because now the, the balance sheet of PBOC is 150 trillion. Eh? So why yeah, why yeah. you can't go for trillion? But uh, yeah, it was good. <laughs> it was big. Yeah, yeah. And and, then, and, uh, you're you're kind of ideologically you're interested in uh, kind of figuring out how to service those uh, people who who had trouble finding credit and and, and banking back to these entrepreneurs. Uh, just uh, before we jump into to Babel and and your interest in the Bitcoin, what are your kind of your thoughts on the progression of that? Uh, kind of capital access for startups in China, uh, credit worthiness. Uh, do you feel like there's been progress since 2015? How, how do you feel about that uh, kind of infrastructure right now? Uh, you mean back then the infrastructure and the and, and comparison with uh, current, current Yeah, kind of the, the problems you were trying to solve back then. Uh, how has that progressed? It, there's no progress at all. Okay. <laughs> it, <laughs> You know, is, that, is that a function of the the uh, kind of regulation around interest rates that are yeah. uh, at the end of 2007 the regulation came in and uh, they caught lots of people from p2p industry and they mm-hmm. caught lots of people from uh, this kind of data service company uh, you know because uh, back back to 2008 and 2000 and late of 2007 and 2008 uh, sorry 2017 and 2018. Uh, lots of new regulations came and uh, that the, the privacy of the citizens has been protected because uh, before that actually we can get these id information uh, lots of uh, records of people uh, without limitations it was bad i mm-hmm. i didn't realize that um, when i was doing the first company but uh, uh, the second company uh, but now when i reviewed the the progress or reviewed my, my, my experience there, I was thinking it's not good. I mean, uh, privacy of people has been breached. Bra- and uh, mm. also, and uh, I think China has been doing something good for uh, protect the citizens' private privacy, uh, like uh, from the companies uh, or from the data service companies, but uh, not yet to themselves. I mean, uh, <laughs> right. That's, that is kind of the, the narrative uh, that's, uh, you know, here at least it's inter- interesting to uh, kind of on a more granular level that the, the companies don't have access to it. It's, it's uh, mm-hmm. more the, 
kind of government uh, adjacent entities. Um, okay, and then uh, so uh, the move to Beijing startup uh, and kind of the fast life with that, and then kind of take us through uh, the idea for for Babel, uh, how you got started there. Uh, yeah, it was another coincidence because I I joined I joined the like a entrepreneur uh, like a class or entrepreneurship training courses of uh, JD Finance, Jindong Finance, mm -hmm. and I met uh, Yi, He Yi from Binance. Mm. Uh, he Yi was, the, was in uh, a kind of a broadcasting company in China uh, back to 2000, 2017. And uh, I actually, we, during the class, I actually learned a bit blockchain. And uh, he, he, she was actually the the like a mentor for me uh, for the blockchain technology and the Bitcoin. And uh, um, back then she was, she, she has not decided yet uh, to go to Binance. Uh, she stays in uh, the, the, the area, Puxiang, Wanjing, Wanjing area, which was the company, we, our company located. So we are so close and we can meet every day like for, for the morning training exercise like morning running, this kind of thing. So I got more information on blockchain. I, I have been changed from like, yeah, this is scam. This is a uh, fraud, uh, thanks to, oh, this is something that I was so into. Uh, I'm, I'm, I should be doing something here uh, for this industry because this, this industry can bring people uh, new kinds of freedom. So um, I just, uh, after the, actually, the trigger point for me is actually the regulation because the regulation asks us not to do this anymore. So I drop, I actually uh, give up on the second company and uh, I started Babel with uh, Dell uh, from, uh, he, he, he is my uh, co-founder and uh, he had good experience in ICBC and good experience in entrepreneurships as well. He, he founded uh, two, two data companies and he, he got experience in Ripple, although uh, back, back to 2017, uh, 2013. So it was a very good combination uh, from for, for, for us to to do uh, some financial services in blockchain uh, industry, especially for mm. Bitcoin. Um, yeah. Yeah. So. And, and what that was that? Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's super interesting. Kind of the, the uh, network there that you were part of that, uh, that um, launched you into this. What, uh, what was kind of the initial idea for Babel, uh, kind of initial business model that y'all were, were working through? And then uh, I guess uh, take us through that uh, kind of starting process and then um, maybe kind of the current state of the business and your, your product offerings yeah. now. Yeah, because uh, uh, back to 2018, uh, in the like a, a March, for April, uh, back then the market is still in a, like a, a transition period from bull market to bear market. And uh, uh, back then, uh, we are thinking. Uh, we actually we got experience in entrepreneurship, so uh, we know we need to find out the root of these uh, industries. Or what is actually the root question or root 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 pain point of this in, in this industry? Mm. Um, so we we because we have good experience in uh, finance, uh, so financial services. So we understand finance, I mean, more than other entrepreneurs in uh, blockchain area. Um, we actually know that finance is actually uh, a tool, I mean, to allocate risk and return on the space value and the time values. Uh, space value is actually exchange rate. Namely, you have a chicken, uh, I have a cow that we exchange chicken and cow. It's kind of space value. And uh, another is time value, interest rate, uh, namely, you have US dollar now, but you don't need to spend it. So you, you deposit to like a financial institution and to lend it to other people to earn yield. So it's interest rate. And uh, back then it's actually the, the major service provide, financial service provider is actually uh, exchange. Namely Binance, uh, Hobi, OK, it's kind of a uh, uh, crypto mm -hmm. exchange and uh, Coinbase and, and uh, other kinds of uh, legitimate exchange. This kind of thing. So uh, this exchange are majorly providing the trading services. So we're thinking uh, from the traditional financial view, fi fi finance view that uh, there's another huge market for interest rate. It's debt market. 
and uh, banking services uh, like lending, deposit, asset management, this kind of thing. So we we start we started the business uh, there um, with, with a vision to become the uh, so-called JP Morgan in crypto marketplace. But uh, of course, people in uh, blockchain area, or, or especially Bitcoin ma ma maximist or maxist, uh, they they don't like the, the concept of banking. So we kind of changed from Babel Bank to Babel Finance, but actually we are providing the similar services. Uh, but uh, I think people should regard finance as a good tool. Uh, but the, the problem is actually human. So uh, finance is never wrong. The, the, the problem is human. So don't blame the financial institution, but blame the people in financial institutions. Um, so we still insist on providing financial services to like Bitcoin holders, uh, Bitcoin min mi miners, and uh, uh, other uh, related state stakeholders. Uh, so we started there um, uh, with the vision to become the, like JP Morgan crypto marketplace. Uh, uh, but we started with only we, 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 our initial services actually to to lend money out. Uh, so that's the first function of the commercial banking uh, industry. And uh, um, our experience in the in, in in the entrepreneurship actually helped us a lot. We find the right 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 direction with the right clients with the right time. Um, back then, there are lots of uh, uh, there were lots of competitors in this industry, uh, like us. I mean, uh, and back then, I I don't even know uh, this kind of thing that called US USDT, uh, stable coins, this kind of thing. So I was uh, my my first deck um, actually have some something about the stable coins. Namely, we we need to have some new token for for people to to use as a use as a uh, US dollar. So. Uh, my my actually my understanding on the industry has been improved 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 a lot uh, since then. I mean, yeah, yeah. Well, we you saw the need, you just didn't know that uh, it was already being met in, in some uh, in some form. That's interesting. Yeah. So and then uh, uh, the other competitors spend lot, lots of time um, developing applications, providing services to uh, smaller users in China. But uh, we find out that the key users of this kind of uh, like lending product is a minus uh, was a minus back, back to 2018 because of market price was dropping but people are not willing to sell the bitcoin so there they, they, they was it and we, we, were, we were we were very lucky that we, we have another neighborhood which is pooling so, and mm -hmm. uh, pooling started their bitcoin pool, pool, pooling uh, pool services uh, back to 2018 uh, september 2018 so we grow together. We we stick with them. We 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 ask the uh, like 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 the, the Kevin and the Chris uh, to help us because we are a smaller company, and uh, we just want to go with them to to meet the miners, to to drink baiju with miners, to, to <laughs> like in this case the the, the 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 I mean this week in Chengdu is just so amazing. I mean people people from different yeah. companies. Even very, very. I mean, even those competitors, uh, they they have they have lots of arguments uh, on chain, online. They 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 just fight with each other. But back in Chengdu, it's it's friend friendship. Everyone drink with each other, and cause yeah, yeah. Maybe one reason is that after the virus, people were so 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 keen to to join the social activities. <laughs> Uh, even yeah. the, and, and for people listening, there the you know, one of the first large events uh, in China is happening this week in Chengdu, and it's kind of a mining uh, summit. Uh, I'm surprised I'm surprised uh, uh, you're not there. You you really get along with those folks. But but that's also an, an interesting insight that you had initially that kind of led to uh, this rapid growth of success. Is that you said, hey, uh, miners uh, are the, are um, kind of the first customer we're going to focus on, uh, mm -hmm. and then the the um, uh, you know, your office is, is adjacent to Poland, uh, which uh, may have been uh, fateful for you. But uh, so you, you have kind of the, the connection to uh, start targeting that uh, customer base in, in the first place, which is interesting. Um, and can you give us a little bit of context also for what it's like to go after those initial clients? You mentioned, you know, drinking Baggio with them. Uh, you're, you wasn't drinking Baggio with them this week. Is, uh, you know, take us, take us through kind of that customer acquisition uh, process with miners. It's really a, a very different ball game than, uh, you know, traditional finance, I'd say. Yeah, because uh, initially, because we are a late commerce, 
like we are not like old men in this industry although this mm -hmm. industry is very new but uh, still we have uh, like uh, old man new man this kind of thing uh, so we are new new new, new guys we are young 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 people and uh, they don't give trust to us uh, they didn't give any trust uh, i mean initially back to uh, uh, late 2008 uh, meet, uh, just the, the first few meetings with the uh, 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 first few conferences with pooling people regard us as another group of scammers so <laughs> just say <laughs> want to get my bitcoin this kind of thing but you know trust is not built within one day your mind is not not building within one day so we we drink with them but uh, initially they don't trust us so we need to show that we are professional guys uh, we we want to Make sure that they, uh, they, 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 they are, they, they are, uh, like they, 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 are willing to put coins here. So we initially we just fund the pooling and partners. Kevin has some good words on us, and uh, uh, then we started uh, providing services with them uh, to to them. And then after a few runs, uh, starting from smaller tranches, they feel that uh, oh, you, oh, these guys are good. I mean, they they never lie to us, and uh, even they will lose money. They keep their word so we have good words in the mining uh, like a social uh, mining community so mm -hmm. uh, we have more and more clients there and uh all the, all the mine, mining group mine, miners are not the the biggest uh, portion of clients in for for babel now uh, the, the biggest portion of babel's clients is actually uh, trading firms trading, mm -hmm. trading companies but uh, we started there so we never forgot this uh, experience there and uh, yeah we always uh, we, we, we are willing to provide the services to miners forever i mean even even the mining industry has been changed a lot uh, back to 2018 uh, there are still lots of uh, smaller miners in the industry but uh, after uh, 2018 job um, and uh, 2019 no, no 20 2020 uh, job actually Lots of smaller clients has been wiped out. Mm -hmm. the, the remaining players are quite institutional. Uh, they have good experience of the risk management, uh, cash flow management. But the, um, this is something good for for Bible, but it's not something good for Bitcoin uh, from my point of view, because the, the miners are becoming bigger, and uh, there will be monopoly. Well, there will be something not good. For or not friendly for the Bitcoin network, because some of the uh, miners, as I know, that uh, they have uh, actually occupied around thirty percent of the uh, hash power, and uh, they are willing to take more than fifty percent. But uh, of course, they don't want they they, st they are stakeholders. They don't want to ruin the network, so they kind of divide into different pools and divide into different names. But still, mm -hmm. I know that uh, there's someone is coming with big money and uh, to 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 consume up, um, I think within 2020, they can consume up more than 50% of the hash power. Uh, so that's, maybe, a, that's a pretty big statement. This is, this is something that people you know, talk about is, is uh, you know, uh, just kind of built into Bitcoin and uh, the incentive structure is, is meant to um, not exactly let this happen. What, can you share more on uh, this party that you're talking about that's aiming? Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, you, you know, there's some special situation in China. That uh, China is actually a cap capital control country. Normally, people cannot freely transfer money out or, or in. So, uh, some of the big money, uh, especially during this uh, political crisis recently, I mean, people are, are losing the trust or losing the faith into the government. So, not 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 the normal middle class. I mean, those are very 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 high net worth individuals. So. Um, if they if they have high uh, net, uh, if they have net worth more than like uh, two billion RMB, they are quite freaking out now. Uh, so they are trying to find out some like a, a safe safe room or final heaven uh, for their assets. So Bitcoin, although people normal people will feel it's not something uh, safe heaven assets, but uh, for these people, it's truly safe heaven assets. Uh, because their assets normally properties, uh, equities, bonds, uh, these are uh, actually need to be certified certified by the government to, to for the ownership. Namely, they need the government to say they own these assets. But in China, you know, they are freaking out. So uh, 
now they put a lot of put lots of money into this mining industry to uh, move the Bitcoin for, from China or to sell mm -hmm. the Bitcoin. Or, or, or move the or, or produce a Bitcoin in China and uh, uh, move them globally. I mean, for for their final safe haven, they don't they don't necessarily to own Bitcoin for their like one hundred percent of portfolio in Bitcoin, but they only, they, they, they only need five percent to ten percent for their final final like a uh, emergency plan. So so they they came into this industry with big money. So I mean, uh, I, I I met some guys uh, from this industry, and I know that they are consuming up more and more hash power, and they are purchasing more and more mining machines from those. Uh, Big uh, from these giant uh, uh, mining machine producers, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, I think it's good for Babel's development because we are easier. We are facing these uh, professional clients, but uh, I still feel it's not not good for the Bitcoin network. So, yeah. so maybe maybe I mean Lubian Lubian pool is is some pool, some proof of all this. It must be mm. some big miners they, they organize this kind of course so mm. one one bad evidence i mean one not good evidence at least not not good evidence for me to to be to be kind of uh, cautious for the bitcoin network so if there's something like this happening i think uh, uh, we need to do something i mean to we, we could we need to buy machines as well i mean even for babel if we are a stakeholder of this industry Maybe we need to fight against this kind of uh, 50, 51 percent of hash power on the ship. So we need to buy. Maybe we need to kind of uh, uh, do something for this. But uh, yeah. also the Bitcoin core, core team, they could uh, also do something like a limit some kinds of uh, a similar pattern uh, mining algorithm, this kind of thing. So uh, yeah, there's something that we need to be cautious. Otherwise, Bitcoin yeah. will be <laughs> Big, big topic. Uh, we could we could go in, in a lot of different directions with that. Uh, yeah. Maybe uh, <clears throat> uh, save it for a little bit. So, but kind of on that topic a little bit. So, you, you started out most of your customer base, um, uh, kind of your initial growth period, you're focused on mining. Uh, now you have these other services, and and uh, you know majority of your uh, uh, customer base is kind of institutional now, exchanges, um, traders. Um, uh, can you talk about how you think about growth? in China versus outside of China, how you kind of view the, your company's uh, just growth geographically, how you're thinking about that now? I think it's uh, different. Uh, I mean, it's not, it's not really uh, like it, uh, the, the geographic, geographic, geographical thing is actually the, the historical reason, like uh, Bitcoin, like 70% of big new Bitcoins mined in China. And uh, uh, lots of Western, uh, like uh, U uh, United States trading firm, they, they are looking for Bitcoin's trading opportunity. So this kind of, uh, Babel is in a very good position to, to connect with Western East because uh, miners need cash. They need to pay this electricity, they need to buy new machines, and uh, trading firms, they need Bitcoin or Ethereum, um, this kind of thing. So uh, Babel is playing a very good bridge uh, to, to kind of fulfill two sides requirements. We, we bring cash from the United States. Well, the U U US dollar is, is printed to, to, to China minus. And we, we, we bring the Bitcoins, which was mined in China, which is mined in China to uh, US trading firms. So it's kind of a good bridge to actually to, high, to make the process uh, high, high, highly efficient. And uh, yeah, uh, with, with lower cost. So previously, you know, I mean, gen, I just I don't I don't name them. Uh, this uh, big trading firm or big lenders in the United States, they, they cannot go to China to drink Baijiu with miners, but we can. We, we are quite grassroots people. So uh, those uh, uh, miners in China, they, they have no very good understanding of financial system. So they don't they can they don't have knowledge to uh, to to negotiate the financial terms with terms with the financial institution in the United States. So. Um, Babel both ha has both things. Have both has both things. We we can drink Baijiu with miners. We can negotiate the t financial terms with the financial institutions. So we are performing a good bridge to make the process highly efficient and to to make both sides uh, costs of capital lower. Namely, we bring them lower cost of Bitcoin and we bring a miners a lower cost of US dollar. So I think uh, this is a key key role for Babel now. Um, sure. Yeah. Yeah. So 
I think uh, the growth is uh, actually, it's kind of related to both uh, China and the US. It's not, uh, it's not something that we focus on Europe or sure. you know, it's, it's kind of a mutual things. Yeah. I cannot yeah. do one side without another side. Yeah. Sure. And I think it'd be helpful to kind of drill down a little bit more into some of your business lines. Um, you know, you, you kind of talked about starting with um, lending. Now you do um, other things as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe kind of take us through your product suite a little bit and, uh, and just some kind of context for how it's grown. Okay. Actually, uh, Babel has been regarded as a lending firm. Uh, for a long time, but uh, actually our business line is quite complicated. Uh, mm -hmm. Starting lending, and we also have asset management side. Uh, currently, we we contribute more than uh, th th thirteen percent of the trading volume on the uh, Darabit, and we are number one maker and num number one takers, number one taker on the paradigm, the OTC option trading uh, platform. Uh, mm -hmm. So we are quite an important player. Uh, in the options uh, trading uh, area for Bitcoin. Uh, the reason is uh, that uh, I think uh, options pricing is quite related to, uh, quite complicated. It's a lot of, lot, lots of models and lots of uh, Greek, Greeks there. So uh, it's, it's actually related to the, the, the initial topic we have been talking about, the space value and time value, namely exchange rate and the interest rate. So after, uh, after uh, the interest market becoming more mature last year, uh, the options trading desk could be do could, could could be doing more more jobs, and uh, because um, Bitcoin is a quite volatile uh, asset class, <laughs> as described by the Goldman Sachs. Uh, <laughs> but normally we, we regard Bitcoin as quasi currency, at least quasi currency, currency, or, or if it's not currency, um, so. Uh, if uh, we regard it as an asset class, the velocity of Bitcoin is quite high. So there's lots of opportunities in the option trading market because options is more related to the volatility uh, because the IV implied volatility is actually the key key thing for options pricing. So as long as it's a high volatility for volatility market, there are lots of arbitrage, lots of uh, sell the volatility uh, op opportunities in this market. So this market becoming mm -hmm. more and more popular. Uh, even uh, other big counterparties uh, or Babel's big counterparties joining this market as well. So I think uh, we are bringing the clients lots of uh, structured option products to make to, to bring them the uh, the enhanced yield with expected return uh, with, uh, with enhanced yield with expected risk, namely uh, we can describe the risk very, very well and the way we, we let you know under this kind of risk what kind of return you can get so people are quite uh, into this uh, uh, assets uh, uh, into this uh, asset management products and currently we our AUM of this uh, this product line is around 8,000 bitcoins plus uh, uh, 18 million of US dollar so it's quite mm. quite early stage but it's huge already mm. um, and sorry uh so you, so this this product that you're offering, you are uh, offering options uh, options products to your customers, or you are offering uh, them access to uh, kind of your trading strategy on places like Deribit. Uh You're yeah. you're doing the second uh, the, the okay, trading gotcha. strategy. Namely, we we uh, we we built option structure structuring products and then we'll combine snowball structure with uh, we combine different uh, structures of the options to kind of make the risk and the return uh, in line with with each other uh, and to bring this uh, uh, structured product to the clients with the with the acceptable risk and with the acceptable return so uh, mm -hmm. people are quite quite into this product because the risk is described uh, is calculatable and the, the the return is actually in line with the risk, so uh, it's yeah. and, and what is the what, uh -huh. what is what is the um, so that's a, I mean, a a pretty large pool already, and I don't think it's been around for all that long. It, what mm -hmm. what is the kind of main customer base? Uh, what does the main customer for that look like now? Is it is it miners who uh, are uh, you know you're able to kind of explain uh, the math behind it to them? Is it is it institutions who's kind of the main uh, driver of that growth? Uh, for the asset management side, actually. 
uh, both both miners and uh, institutional investors are quite interested. But uh, there's something uh, developing here that uh, we're also doing something on Ethereum, and we find that we, we find out that uh, for the Ethereum, institutional investors are more interested. But for Bitcoin uh, structured product, uh, both miners and uh, uh, institutional investors are, are interested. So quite easy there. Uh, mm. Yeah, so for the asset management uh, side, uh, currently Babel is a big buy side uh, in the industry because we, we got lots of uh, US dollar stable coins, namely, and uh, big coins on hand. So uh, we are a big buy side in this industry. So we are trying to get more sell side here. Uh, to to see what they, they can offer what what they can offer to the clients, uh, we are bringing uh, some of the traditional financial institutions trading desk uh, strat strategy. And if they have good strategy, we will run a little bit of uh, run a little portfolio there, and a small portfolio there. And then after we test out, we will bring to the clients. So interesting. So, to your point so earlier on on uh, you know, them not being able to come and, and drink by Joe with. Uh, with miners, but you can be that bridge and offer, uh, you know, products that you vetted to your client base in China. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, so besides the asset management line, we are uh, also uh, actually based on the asset management line that we are also offering as uh, the, the so-called private banking services to the high net worth individuals. Uh, two groups. One group is actually the traditional mining uh, or tra traditional crypto native investors. Uh, they they hold big amount of Bitcoin, but they have nowhere to go. But uh, and they, they 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 got no service from the from traditional bank. Uh, the even Goldman Sachs is kind of company they cannot offer this kind of Bitcoin products. So mm -hmm. we are uh, uh, like we are early 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 adopter for this kind of thing. So they 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 like this. And for the uh, another group is actually the traditional high net worth individuals uh, in the traditional world. Uh, but they are quite interested in in Bitcoin now. Uh, the the reason is uh, uh, I just mentioned that uh, safe haven safe haven for them uh, that uh, they don't need to they don't necessarily to hold one hundred percent of their portfolio into Bitcoin. But uh, why not uh, two percent to five percent? So uh, this is our next 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 group of target clients, and uh, therefore we we are establishing a new Type 9 company in Hong Kong, Type 9, namely asset management licensed uh, uh, fund in Hong Kong. So uh, we, we will have the co this company within like a next next half year and uh, mm -hmm. we'll bring this kind of le legitimate <laughs> asset management pr product to the traditional uh, fund, uh, high net worth individuals. So for the crypto native ones, they don't really care because they know that the key is actually whether you are a trustable partner and uh, how you store your uh, bitcoins and how you allocate your bitcoins to uh, like a net legitimate or non-legitimate exchange, this kind of thing. Uh, but for the newcomers, uh, the new high net worth individual group, they don't understand uh, bitcoin. So uh, what they need is actually a license. So mm -hmm. we'll have this license uh, in Hong Kong to provide this uh, legitimate asset management program for the traditional financial. Uh, high net worth, uh, high net worth individuals or traditional financial groups, and um, maybe they, they cannot really be on this stage because uh, they are kind of company in China. So it's uh, it's not legal to hold uh, bitcoins in China for a for institution. So maybe they will have some like overseas uh, SPV to to hold these kind of bitcoins. And uh, it was try. It was quite common for this company to hold overseas assets to SPV, so uh, it's uh, it's actually normal practice. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so this is uh, private banking services, uh, and uh, our our this this year, our, our one of the very very big target is actually to to provide primary uh, prime prime brokerage services for the for the trading firms, because when we, we, trading 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 organization. Or trading firms are actually the biggest clients of our uh, is, is biggest clients of the uh, of the Babel of, of Babel platform or Babel Finance, um, but they need to borrow money or borrow Bitcoin from us and then send to exchange to do the tradings to 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 do the trading executions. So from the Babel's point of view, quite like Genesis what has been doing, they want to provide uh, prime broker bro brokerage services for their clients. We we are also in a very similar position because we have a big balance sheet 
and we can we have a very good bargaining power against the exchange and mm -hmm. uh, we have a good, uh, risk management uh, 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 system uh, for them to to treat treat on the exchange um, I think yeah, something also, that's in the in the news today with uh, Tagomi being acquired by coinbase uh, yes so this morning because Coinbase is not willing to call Tagomi Daddy in the future, so they're quiet. <laughs> it's like Facebook is is not going to is not happy to call like a, a Instagram Daddy or <laughs> as Daddy, so they're quiet. Because uh, in the future, I think uh, uh, we're still copying the system of traditional finance. Namely, we we need brokers for brokerage services in this industry because there are lots of ex exchanges in, in the industry. So if you want to gain the uh, arbitrage opportunities in this uh, di between different exchanges, you definitely need this kind of brokerage services that uh, could provide you portfolio margin services. Uh, why I address the portfolio margin here is because um, for the exchange now in, in the industry, they they uh, for the for the uh, Asian exchange, they have no such ability to provide uh, this uh, portfolio margin services to their clients. Namely, they can only ask you to. I, either you do spot trading, either you do uh, margin trading, either you do future trading, either you do uh, option trading, but they cannot, they, they have no enough financial guys or enough uh, financial knowledge or understanding to develop such a portfolio margin thing. But uh, it's something that Babel has been, has been having. <laughs> Namely, we, mm. we, naturally, uh, naturally we, 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 we are a team to do this kind of thing. So we actually lots of people are trying to, understand prime brokerage as trading execution but actually prime brokerage is not the, the value of uh, the value provided by pro, pro, prime brokerage is not on trading execution but rather than the portfolio margin things namely the trading firm can spend or can put less coins in the exchange to do more tradings so this is something some values Babel can bring to like Takumi can bring to Coinbase its clients like Babel can bring to our clients like Genesis can bring to their clients. So mm -hmm. this is one of the biggest target this year, but uh, it's, it's, it's not an easy job. Um, the key challenges are the system, system, the trading system, trading portal. This is one. Another thing is actually popular margin. So this market is very, very volatile. So <laughs> another, another uh, like a Black Thursday will, will just ruin the system. So uh, we will be very cautious and uh, we will kind of protect clients interest interest on this mm -hmm. yes so what do we so, so, mm, uh, yeah. so we're getting pretty ambitious with uh kind of the, the private banking uh uh some prime brokerage aspirations uh your derivatives uh AUM is 90 million uh, already uh you uh are also um uh So you're doing all these things, have all these ambitions. Um, uh, any other, uh, I guess, products that are in the suite now that are worth mentioning? Yeah, I think uh, it's pretty much uh, all of them. And uh, actually, after after we we, we we can provide this kind of uh, services to clients, well, well, very close to JP Morgan already. Because mm -hmm. when you click on the JP Morgan's uh, IR in, IR page, investor relation page. The services including commercial banking, uh, private banking, and uh, asset management, brokerage services, all these things. And uh, Babel is just, uh, actually uh, for CFI, I mean, there's uh, arguments between DeFi, CFI things for, uh, Babel is actually now a CFI thing. So uh, what we are doing is not on the innovation of technology, but we're trying to copy the uh, financial services from the traditional financial world to crypto marketplace um, yeah so yeah uh, yeah so ne next step maybe for us after the PB just uh, 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 one thing that after PB maybe we are trying to build a decentralized CCP uh, in this industry CCP is a central counterparty namely like a central bank or whatever but uh, a central counterparty uh, there's there's good thing about a central counterparty namely uh, the, the association could help the members on the uh, CCP uh, to deal with each, each other with credit. Currently, 
Weibo needs to borrow money from the counterparty with uh, collateral sometimes. With mm -hmm. um, but uh, in the future, maybe we can borrow from if if they are all the as a member of the as the new association, decentralized as association, we can borrow each other with each other um, uh, by staking into the associate with, association with like Bitcoin, or Ethereum, or, or stable coins, this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. As long as this uh, member stake like five million or fifty million of uh, Bitcoin or Ethereum and into the system, the other counterparty kind of could have the credibility for them, uh, have the credit of 50 million to this counterparty. Kind of so this is something that we are thinking, but uh, it's more, it's it's something that Ripple has been doing back to 2013, because they have gateway system, namely you need to trust another counterparty kind of with a staking. But uh, yeah, we are trying, but uh, it takes time. Yeah, for sure. And uh, something you uh, kind of hit on uh, and talking about some of the uh, risk management around uh, the prime brokerage Black Thursday, uh, uh, you you uh, have uh, coined it there. Can you talk a little bit more about your kind of risk management uh, processes, thoughts, how you're uh, you know approaching approaching things um, following Black Thursday, if any differently? Um, it's actually the the, the methodology. At are not not different, but the the buffer is bigger now. I mean, before Black Thursday, uh, we have uh, less buffer than current the the risk management buffer. Uh, the key 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 things has not been changed mm -hmm. because the risk of this market are still they are still this uh, uh, few risks like market risk, price risk, like a, a liquidity risk, like counterparty risk, like a systematic risk, this kind of thing. The, the, the nature of the risk has not been changed before uh, before uh, Black Thursday and after the Black Thursday. And even after Black Thursday, the, the market becoming more healthy with more institutional players coming, like Tudor, mm -hmm. like Renaissance. If they are doing the arbitrage trading on the CME, the, the, the uh, so-called February premium event will not, not, not happen anymore. Because the, the 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 Black Thursday was actually a result of two major uh, things in, in in this industry. One is uh, February premium, namely back then there are very huge premium between the spot and future, uh, between the future and the spot. So uh, it, it's because of the the, the, the trading firms and miners miners are too leveraged. But if with this uh, new arbitrage fund a strategy like Renaissance and uh, Tudor fund, this kind of premium will be wiped out. So mm. that will be healthier for, for this market. And uh, uh, yes, uh, after the, the crisis, people get more cautious and uh, trading firms get more conservative. So these are good things uh, mm. that we have, been, we have been finding out. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. Um, any any uh, Tudor, uh, you know, those, those names are uh, big ones worldwide, but, uh, you know, are familiar to people in the West. Any uh, any kind of action worth mentioning from uh, kind of big uh, Chinese firms that are well regarded, uh, kind of jumping into, um, into uh, jumping in in kind of the same time frame? Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, I, I, I may miss you. Your question because I, I replied one, one, one thing to the client. Hey, no worries. You, uh, you uh, have to be hands on still for sure. Uh, so you, you mentioned Tudor, Tudor and uh, uh -huh. these firms are, uh, that are, have joined recently are, are well known in the West. Is there any, uh, you know, would you add any Chinese firms or um, firms out there that have, uh, you know, jumped into the space recently that maybe haven't got as much uh, attention but are working with, you know, similar sophistication uh -huh. in AUM? No, pu no public joining. <laughs> this market, <laughs> and it's, uh, it's quite because uh, regulatory framework here is quite uh, not uh, friendly to 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 crypto. So, uh, not yet publicly joined, but uh, I know there are some uh, SPVs for them to, to has been engaging in this marketplace. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can you talk a little about your, your custody strategy and how you think about that for your different? Uh, you know, customers and business lines. I know you have some some partners listed for different things on your site. Uh, mm. Talk about your custody. Uh, we, we have been engaged with uh, those famous uh, custody service provider in 
in the world, but uh, not yet Fidelity, but we are trying to amble un with Fidelity as well. Because, uh, but we, we have two, two, two strategies. One is for the crypto native one. One is for the traditional financial guys or traditional uh, people. Um, so for the native uh, crypto native guys, we, we have our own cold storage system. We have engaged with some uh, custody services for the warm, warm, warm storage. Uh, but for the cold storage, storage we maintain them, them ourselves uh, with the um, proven technology like uh, electrons and uh, ledger or electron with cobalt or other things. Um, but for the traditional guys, uh, we, we need to we engage with those uh, famous uh, custody service provider like Fidelity, Fact, uh, and uh, other other uh, custody service providers. Um, I think uh, we, we need to look at things divided uh, di uh, separately. Uh, so we have different strategies on that. Yeah, and for yeah. the strategy dealing with uh, uh, those exchanges, we are thinking to do on a credit base, namely we have some margin there, and uh, we want we, we we have the T plus one settlement credit, uh, like uh, for fifty million this kind of thing. So we we have been doing the trading for fifty million, but uh, uh, the settlement would be T T plus one. Um, um, so we don't need to put lots of points in the exchange in case the the because this is inherent risk of this industry the the. The, the counterparty risk of the exchange. But for Coinbase, of course, you can put more because they have uh, uh, li license, whatever, this kind of thing. So mm -hmm. um, we also need to assess the credit uh, profile of the different exchanges and the different uh, uh, custody service providers to, to see how we allocate these coins. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, how big is the, is the team now, by the way, in China and in, in Korea? I think uh, you have an office also. Actually, we are facing a, a quite big challenge here. <laughs> uh, that normally, we say that we have 60 people around, but now we have been divided. Like uh, uh, Hong Kong company, Hong Kong company, and Beijing tech team, and uh, uh, Beijing operation team, and uh, Beijing PR team, this kind of thing. Because uh, currently in Beijing, the regulatory framework is not friendly to crypto, so uh, the government, the, 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 the regulators here, just wants well, just wanted to just wants to just want they, they just want to us not stay in Beijing because uh, they don't really want to think about it because mm -hmm. this market is still very small for them like it's just 20 200 billion market right 200 billion US dollar market but uh, comparing to their 150 trillion balance sheet they they don't have too much sure. um, energy for bringing new framework uh, and uh, like a tr uh, like a framework to this but not not like Hong Kong, Singapore. This is a kind of island country or island uh, place or a, a area. They they need to benefit from the global trading business, uh, especially like uh, Bitcoin. This kind of global assets. So they are quite friendly to crypto, and they spend energy into it to to build up uh, like a regulation framework. And then for the United States, it's easier because they they regulate these things as securities. So uh, not yet on Bitcoin, but I think because uh, yesterday Goldman Sachs said uh, that uh, Bitcoin is kind of security, but not an asset class. I don't understand why they talk like that way, but uh, maybe in the future <laughs> Bitcoin will be regarded as security in, in USA and uh, maybe ETF is coming, so it will be re regulated as security. So it's easier. But for China, it's kind of, they don't want to spend energy on that. As long as you don't you don't provide services to to the everyday users. As long as you you don't touch fiat, I don't want to give a shit. I, I don't want to give a fuck on you. But uh, the problem is that uh, if they don't want to give a fuck on uh, to to us, then we have problem dealing with our clients and uh, with our colleagues. So we are now divided into lots of companies and uh, maybe a technology company, a uh, operation company. Uh, mm -hmm. So. It, Maybe it's uh, uh, things you don't things you don't need to be spending time on when you have uh, you know all these uh, you know clients and services operations to be handling that it is. It's just kind of a, makes it more difficult to operate there, I guess, in, in a sense. Yeah, uh, but but this is also an opportunity for us to try out the decentralized way of working. Maybe it's mm -hmm. the future. Um, people after we have uh, technology advance, 
uh, advancement in the future, maybe it's a, it's a future company's uh, organization structure, namely yeah. the different uh, freelancers everywhere, and uh, you provide service to another co uh, co organization or another people, and uh, you earn Bitcoin, right? So that's yeah. easier. Yeah, maybe. and you, you, you touched on something uh, in kind of explaining uh, your, your, your business lines and kind of the ecosystem there, that, uh, you know, currently it's still, we're still kind of, you know, building the same banking system again, but for, uh, for Bitcoin, uh, you, know, you talk about kind of remote work, maybe, maybe there's some things changing. Uh, what are kind of your thoughts on what, you know, what they will, what a, a banking institution looks like in, in two to, you know, two to five years here, but what, what's kind of your aspirational, uh, 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 thought on that? You know, you mentioned kind of a decentralized think, way a couple of times. Yeah. Uh, currently there are two ways of, uh, uh, two two ways of uh, uh, exploring exploring the digital banking. One is traditional ways like uh, WeChat, Alipay, and the the, the digital banking in uh, di 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 digital banks in Hong Kong, in, in England, in Britain, and in USA. And another way is our crypto native ones. We we deal with only tokens, uh, cryptos, uh, bitcoins, this kind of thing, and uh, we are. Something, although our business model is traditional, but with a, with a new new weapon or, or with new uh, f uh, infrastructure. So uh, both parties are working towards the the end, namely the open open finance or uh, open uh, or open whatever open bank. Uh, but uh, I think both 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 are good try, and uh, we we learn from them. They they will learn from us, and maybe in the future we will combine. But uh, I don't have a clear view on that. Uh, but I still believe in crypto area because uh, although we have we, we are under big pressure on the KYC ML things, but uh, we have two gateways here. One is uh, so-called traditional way of compliance, and another way we still can provide uh, quite decentralized financial services there. So uh, I think we are in a better position compared to those. Uh, challenging bank but uh uh i think time 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 will tell yeah when, when, yeah yeah uh and then uh to kind of close out uh your we, we close out the show with a, a recommendation from you um for anything related to to where you are so uh you know y'all are in hong kong you're in beijing uh just give us a, a recommendation it can be a book can be a, a place to eat can be Perfect. Well, uh, I really appreciate the time. I think that we could you know, dive into some of these things in a lot more detail even and, and uh, your fountain of knowledge and experience with it. Um, so mm -hmm. appreciate your time. Hello?